Hey guys, look what I got. That's right, I got the Emacs Baby Hawk from Banggood.com. It is a micro FPV brushless drone. This thing is a little powerhouse from what I understand and I cannot wait to open up the box and see what's going on inside. All right guys, here's what we've got going on inside the box. As you can see, we've got the top of the antenna and then the FPV camera right there. We've got some accessories off to the side, so we're just gonna take this off. We have some spare props right there, very cool. And we've got our accessories pack right here with some screws and nuts. Awesome. Who doesn't like some nuts in their hand? All right, so here is the Baby Hawk itself. All right, looks pretty cool. This thing is, uh, it's 2S, it's brushless. It is known to be pretty powerful. And another thing that's pretty cool is it has a very wide range of batteries that we can use on it. And it also has the very common J Red JXT plug. Um, I've seen folks in videos go from like 3,300 milliamp hour batteries and to my friend John, he's flown it with a 2S1000 battery that he got or that he had from one of his little RC buggies. So I've got one of those too. So I may use that. I've also got some Babel bats that I'm going to use. So there's a lot of options. There are a lot of options that we can use for batteries to power this thing, which is very cool. Another thing that I need to tell you guys is a lot of my subscribers are used to, you know, ready to fly out of the box, that sort of thing. And guess what? I am too. So this thing is a plug and play, which means I need, su need to supply a receiver. And I'm going to do that. And to do that, I've actually got a spectrum receiver that I'm going to use. And you'll see that after I get done soldering it. That's right. I said solder. I need to do some soldering up here and then some soldering down in there and I will basically tell you about it when I'm done what I'm gonna do is take off the props because anytime you do any kind of work on something like this you want to remove the props for safety safety is good guys and then this white plastic piece pops off there okay <laughs> And then there's some screws down there that I need to unscrew, take this off so I have complete access to this board so I can do what I need to do. Once the receiver is placed on there, wired in, all that stuff, set and ready to go, we need to plug this in to Betaflight. That's right, guys. We can program this with Betaflight. That's always a very cool thing to give us full control. I have never done that but I have researched that quite a bit lately, so that's gonna be fun to kinda of dig into that and, and do some stuff, learn some stuff. This hobby is rewarding in so many ways, and one of the ways is the opportunity to learn how to do things and get yourself out of your comfort zone a little bit. So before I go on to do the, the work on the hardware, I also wanna let you guys know that this is the channel indicator right there, and it, it's an LED, so it pops up, nice, nice bright color, nice bright illumination rather, and there you go. So I'm going to quit talking, and I am going to do some soldering, and let's see what happens. All right, guys, here is the finished product. This thing is all soldered up, bound up, tuned in beta flight. Uh, I want to give a huge shout out to John VHRC. Uh, he came by and helped me with the soldering. This is, if you're going to try and solder for the first time, this is probably electronic solder, that is. You're going to try and solder for the first time. This is probably not the application. This pin wasn't too bad, uh, but this spot right back down in there, go to the side. Yeah, that was, not sure you can really even see that. Let's here, let's move this to the side there. All right, right back down in there. Even with all this stuff removed, that is a very challenging place to solder. 
if you're not experienced at it. So John, help me with the soldering. And there's nothing wrong with calling in some reinforcements that are experienced. Now, I plan to get some soldering experience on some larger quads, larger FPV quads in the future. And that way I can tackle something like this no problem in the future. Uh, along those same lines, I do want to say in spite of the soldering that's required, I did take this for a quick little indoor test flight and it handles extremely well. It is, it really is like a very good entry level FPV racer. Now I've got the Nano QX FPV2 and it's, it's good, it's good. Um, that might be a, a first entry level FPV quad period. And then you could easily jump up to this. This is brushless, has a lot more power, but it is incredibly stable. And I'm going to show you guys some flight video, or flight footage of that coming up soon. Uh, I also want to show you a little more closely how I wired this. Um, so what I did is, uh, what John and I did rather, again a big shout out to John, thanks John. Check the link in the description for his channel. He has a really good channel, he's got a unique style in how he delivers the information. He's got a wide variety of RC that he features on there too. Um, some of his videos I've recorded, so it's definitely high quality stuff. So check that out in the description. What we did is there really isn't a lot of room for this size of receiver up here. So we mounted it down here, add a little bit of bottom weight to add a little more stability in flight. And it just Velcroed right there. We snaked it up through, just use a little scotch tape reinforce that and get a little separation there it should work fantastic of course when we give it some some testing outdoors with a little bit of range we'll see what the range is on it but overall I am extremely impressed with this guys really it's it's a good little little RC FPV racing drone at the price point it is you really can't beat it uh, just takes a little extra work, a little learning, which is never a bad thing. So I'm going to wrap things up right now. Like, comment, and subscribe. And GB Linden, out.